<clears throat> Anything happening? Okay. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Marius, please never use this scene again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so welcome to the show, everyone. Jan, we haven't heard from you in a long time. I am muted. Oh. What? No, you're not. No. I could hear you. No, we're not. You lied to me. Maybe Jan Sorry, is the stream is still answer. on. His mouth is moving already. I have no idea what's happening. I don't either. Okay. Someone said that I muted. You were, you were muted. muted. Okay, we're good then. I can hear you. On the stream itself, too. Excellent. Mm. Anyway, Jan, we haven't heard <laughs> from you in a while. What's been happening? <laughs> um, well... I was on vision for a week, and for the other time, I have no excuses. <laughs> so. Okay, works yeah. for me. Welcome <laughs> back to the show. We're happy to hear from you again. Thank you. All right, let's talk. We have a great roundup of news, events, and questions for this week. So let's kick this off with some news. And first, we have Ubuntu Touch OTA 10. Ooh. Yay. No one celebrated with me. <laughs> so Ubuntu Touch OTA 10 is our 10th stable release of the operating system for mobile devices. And in this update, we have a ton of new fixes to hardware compatibility, especially. That's what people will notice the most. So on your Fairphone 2, if you were having trouble with those upside-down selfies because no one likes reversing gravity, there are fixes to that now. There's also fixes to camera um, audio and video sync for the Nexus 5 and OnePlus One, and a ton of other fixes, all thanks to Rachanan. So thank you so much, Rachanan, for everything that you did in this cycle. I know that it was a lot of work, so huge thanks. Especially when uh, the Fairphone camera was okay, but the other camera started rotating. Mm -hmm. That was, that of was the, One of the moments as a developer where you think, no, please, no. <laughs> That's not possible, please. No. So basically, to recap, um, on this one, it was weird because someone hard-coded camera orientation for certain devices. Um, Canonical. And then, yeah, I, someone there probably, but we don't want to. But we don't want to point with the finger. But uh, it was not enough just to remove the hard coding and guessing the orientation. It changed everything together. Um, what's what's actually doing the determination of the camera? So he did a really really great job. And he has a lot of Android knowledge. And in the same time, he's also, um, uh, let's say, master of uh, Ubuntu and Linux things. So yeah, that's the profile where we would need more people of. The <laughs> <laughs> hybrid genies. Yes. Magic. Yeah, yeah. it is. So yeah, Black. along I mean, with that. By the way, that... he also switched the uh, audio channels right and left, which was mixed up on the Fairphone. And somebody noticed this a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would listen to your stereo signal in the wrong way. But yeah, it's not that obvious bug. <laughs> was the sound upside down too? <laughs> it was actually, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> also, what? fixes for the messaging app as well as libertine landed in this update so a lot of uh, 
nice to have things like having draft support in the messaging app, which people will find very useful, including myself, because I normally don't finish a thought before leading, leaving a chat. So again, a huge thank you to everyone who made OTA 10 a reality. Now let's look forward. <laughs> Also going on this week uh, was the Ophono Hackathon. Uh, actually, I think it's still ongoing because it's just Saturday night. I don't know if they're already finished. I wasn't able to determine their whole schedule from their uh, from their page and from the pad they made. Um, oh no, you're right. It's um, GMT plus two and from 20 o'clock GMT plus two to the end. I don't know what the end will be. Okay, it's written here. So they had only a dinner break, probably. So the Ophono Hackathon um, actually tries to fix one of the biggest problems that we have with porting at the moment, um, which is no calls, or actually calls are there, but no audio. Uh, be it incoming or outcoming or both, um, there are a lot of audio problems uh, in the stack for Halium 7.1. So I want to give a little shout out to the participants, which um, is also not very clear who actually is not participating. So Ophono Hackathon guys, hello from the live cast. Thank you for hacking. Um, they also wanted to report the progress on LunaOS and Plasma Mobile. So this is something that really is not only Ubuntu touch. Yeah? So various people from the community try to find a, a common solution for um, having a phone routing the audio thing um, so also for if you plug in headphones or if you're going to the speakerphone and so on. Yeah? Um, as so far as what I can see is that um, they made uh, just a note here that uh, Ophono itself works as advertised, but um, Therapy Ophono, a wonderful package that should switch the inputs, um, is not behaving nicely. So let's see what comes out. Um, the best outcome would be that after this hackathon, we have calls on the Halion ports. And that would be a great thing, because hopefully it will work them on all Halion ports. Right? And I think it was one of the blockers that we had on um, most of the uh, ports. And most porters got frustrated with not having audio in the calls. I mean, you can have a non-working camera or other issues, but a phone is a phone. It should be able to make calls. So I can understand. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thanks for the organization and um, uh, thanks for any results that they will be delivered. Um, yeah, not kid is in and um, well, actually Dalton, you're not part of the hackathon, but you also posted. I'm just going through the list of people here. Um, well, Simon from Plasma Mobile and there are 664 members now in the Halium group, at least what's shown to me. So uh, that's a lot of people interested in that. Yeah. There has been some uh, help in that direction where calls can be started now and will route correctly, but they don't uh, reroute for headphones or speakerphone or any of that. So we are getting a lot farther than we were before, which is always good to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are more events coming up, if that wasn't enough for you, including UbuCon Europe, which is on the 10th to 13th of October in Sintra, Portugal. You can find everything you need to know about that at ubucon.eu, but we do have some people speaking there from the project, including uh, Jan... I think I pointed the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. Down there. <clears throat> and Marius too, I think, right? Uh, yes, hopefully. Uh, I do plan to go there, but um, my life has been a mess the last uh, months because family events. Um, but uh, I hope to go, yeah. Awesome. And there's tons of speakers from other projects and the entire Ubuntu community there. So if you want to get some more Linux for everyone in your life, that's the place you need to go. And it 
Central looks like an extremely beautiful city, so you probably just want to go to be there. Mm. It'll probably be a lot nicer than here in October. <laughs> also coming up a little bit sooner, uh, the Deco 2 Hackathon. Florian, I suspect you might know a little something about the <clears throat> Deco 2 Hackathon, too. Not too much. I just saw uh, that they're organizing a place, and um, now you caught me a little bit off guard. Um, okay. I'm so just... <laughs> the whole event is <laughs> listed on gettogether.community, yes. uh, the UbiPort's hackathon for Deco 2. Let me post this in YouTube live chat. Here's the link, everyone. Um, there we go. So this is mm -hmm. happening at Brain Lab uh, in exactly yeah. <laughs> in <laughs> Munich on August thirtieth, twenty nineteen, from six p.m. until September first at six p.m. And they're going to push forward Deco Two for both smartphone and desktop. Um, the whole um, agenda is pretty open so if you're interested in working with deco 2 um they will happily invite you in and help you out with that so link is posted in youtube live chat uh it should also be in the notes that come out with this episode on our blog at blog ubports.com slash blog uh, if you want to find that get together dot community, you can create an account, uh, get signed in and say that you're going to these events. So that helps them know how many are coming. So it'd be very appreciated. Okay. I hope Anything that people get some love because many people ask about uh, the months for fixing this or that problem with uh, the emails and, um, so it really, really needs some love. So we are very grateful that uh, finally now this is going to happen. Yeah, yeah this is the reschedule of it that everyone was yeah. very um, happy to see. This so they didn't uh, give up. They just postponed it a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thanks, guys. All the best. No pressure, but uh, we expect the, the best. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching. Ooh. Ooh. Should we Actually, take a look just to, here? To say a little bit, also Jan is on the participants list. Are you going to uh, see what they're doing? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there. OK, cool. So when whoever wants to meet Jan has no clue about the Kudu coding, but you can also go there and just <laughs> meet him. <right? laughs> Hopefully 200 people yes. will be there now. Huh? Two, three, four. Everyone I likes Jan. Subscription. He's tall. really tall. <laughs> That's you nice. cannot miss him. That's the advantage. Yeah? <laughs> I remember when uh, when we all was in, in, in Bergen, not Dalton, but it was just me and Florian, the two small person, and then we had the rest of the board <laughs> just giants. Well, no, Ricardo it was me is... and Ricardo. Yeah, me Medium and Ricardo. Yeah. <laughs> Medium <size. laughs> the UP okay. Ford's foundation is tall. Florian is quieter than everyone. Florian, can you turn up your mic gain a little bit? I have no idea where, but I can try. Okay, he works for He's me. He's using Windows, everyone. <laughs> Come on, don't blame me online. <laughs> let's I take a break from OS shaming. And let's thank our <laughs> sponsors here. So thank you to everyone who helps make Ubuntu Touch possible through monetary donations, as well as infrastructure and time donations. If you want to donate... Monetarily, you can go to ubiports.com slash donate. But we'd like to thank our sponsors, including DigitalOcean, Smooze, Packet.net, um, and our community sponsors, Darko Balka, Thoralf San, Laurentian Tilleman, Milan Ilv, Scott Marley, Renan Mirkoliv, Morgan McMillan, Sergio Svetsov. If you'd like me to mispronounce your name too you can head over to patreon.com slash ubiports and pick the community sponsor level uh <laughs> yay 
you know, if you like that sort of thing. So thank you to everyone who's making that possible. Let's take some questions, shall we? So our questions always, of course, come to the front of the line from our forum at forums.ubports.com. The post for that comes from uh, in the news section uh, from the UBports news account. You can ask your questions in that thread. We put them in our nice little document here, and we talk about them. And you can also ask questions in live chat. I'm watching UBports in Matrix and Telegram, as well as YouTube live chat. Let's begin. So, Giba this week asks... Is there a strategic plan or roadmap, so to say, that after X, and in this case X being uh, Mir and Unity 8, we will work on Y? So, um, what I believe you're asking is of more detail uh, than I have for you. So in the open source community, what I've found and what I've found by researching with lots of um, development managers, community managers, is you can only plan these projects in detail for about three months in advance. And once you start coming up on those deadlines, um, you can, of course, plan your next three months. But in that time, the really huge features that you'd say like um, uh, fixing all of these Bluetooth things or fixing all of these location things, those big ideas uh, kind of get lost. We've lost Jan. <laughs> so, you said lost. It's clear. Somebody, something has to get lost now. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I've lost my train of thought. In those kind of planning uh, meetings and events that we have, we can only plan out about that far. And in more of an agile fashion, um, as we burn down the things that we're working on, uh, and you can find all those things at github.com slash projects, we have uh, what's coming up for the next projects that we're working on and how they're targeted. Um, You'll find all that information there. As those things start to burn down, we can start to add new things. Um, and those priorities might be different than they were three months ago. So what I think that you want, what I expect you want, what I'm assuming you want, and I'm sorry if this is wrong, was like a, after we do mirror, then we will do location, then we will do Bluetooth, then we will do audio. Um, I'm not able to give you that kind of information at this time um, due to everything I said just now. Uh, later in the post, though, uh, he kind of went into how the foundation would handle this or plans this kind of thing. And to that, I kind of respond, the foundation's goals can be found at ubiports.com. Um, in the foundation tab, just on that homepage, it has all of the foundation's goals. And those aren't exactly um, manage all of the day-to-day -day development of Ubuntu Touch. Um, while it does, however, sponsor our projects, um, that is strictly a community um, effort to do that in-depth planning. Speaking of, um, we are um, we recognize that some of these documents and um, planning meetings um, need to happen more. So we've started to schedule some of these meetings um, in more regularity for like watching the roadmap, watching the release. And um, if you'd like to uh, talk more about that or maybe join those, say, um, how
how you want that community interaction to work, let me know. You can message me directly on Telegram at Universal Superbox. You'll find me on the forum, wherever. Um, so we can see how the community actually would like best and is most able to participate in those kinds of dis discussions. Mixing up my words here. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Eva. And if anyone else has questions related to that, of course, YouTube live chat, Telegram, uh, Matrix, anytime. Up next, Photo Joe asked the question, what's the next Android device that's kind of looking like a good candidate to be considered supported? He knows that we've got the Pine phone, um, and the other mainline projects that are coming up, but this is more Android. So, so one of the devices that we recently have have looked into and, and send off to uh, that I have one and and also send out to to Rotashan, um is the HC, I can't Rotashan 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 okay Rotashan. <laughs> I'm sorry for butchering your name, um, but um, that device is HTC 10. Um, and the reason for that is because that has HTML out. It has a Qualcomm chipset, chip, chip set, which is a pretty standard chip set. Uh, I can't speak today. Um, and it also has support for, for Android 7.1. It also has a support that already started a little bit that's why we choose that as the the target um but mostly because of the hgmi out possibility on it mm -hmm. of course you should not speculatively buy these phones expecting them to get a port you should wait for the support to actually get there no. because they'll still be on the market when that comes except you want to help unless you want to help then buy, buy it buy it by now. <laughs> um, yeah. So that one's going. Uh, the other phones are kind of in progress. Um, you can watch some of that progress in the Ubiports porting group um, at Ubiports underscore porting. <laughs> I always forget if it's dashes or underscores in Telegram. They have... Um, a lot of people working on a lot of, lot of different ports for BQ, Sony, whatever device it may be. And of course, we're only Something. missing yours. So if you'd like to kind of check out how some of that works, we'd love to help you get started with porting. And the more people that are doing this, the more of those problems get found uh, with the porting process, the faster everyone's devices po device ports go. Uh, one thing to add, because I I came across Twitter, I think yesterday or so, uh, somebody said there kind of a question that was not uh, directed to Q&A, but we can pick it up, um, that the Fairphone 3 got leaked, yeah, and if this will be supported by Ubuntu Touch. And um, I must say that uh, so far there is no information about uh, the Fairphone 3 from an official point of view. I mean... They made some strange announcement for next week where they will unveil something or um, come to the public with some information so people think it's fair from free probably it's correct it might be it might be something completely else we don't know but that would be um, mean yeah <laughs> this would be mean yeah but sorry to say that our contacts and i verified this before the show our contacts to fairphone are a little bit disrupted because some people have left there that were um, more or less in charge of talking with uh, with Canonical or with uh, our guys at this time about uh, Ubuntu Touch. Um, so I think we have to, or we can make an, an inquiry, of course, with them. But so far, uh, to answer for the community, we are not in touch with them. We don't have any information what's going on there. So when they come out with Fairphone Free, there will be no port ready at the day of the sale when it starts. Uh, that's not possible. Uh, so even if they would send us a patch now, I think the time uh, needs to pass because it will be probably a recent device. It will be Android 9, probably. I don't know, but it would make sense from the marketing That's perspective. Yeah. 
So um, we will need some time, uh, even if it's easy to port, it's not going to be there on day zero. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, not to build up any hopes for that, that we seamlessly can deliver this. Uh, but uh, well, um, if it looks promising, that would be really hard in open source community to keep that away for that long. <laughs> what what if it's just a new case? <laughs> oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe they unveil just uh, I don't know a, a new lot. background. A new background. <laughs> new background. Yeah. Oh, now you really are really mean. Yeah. No, it's yeah. probably not. It's probably it's probably staged well, it, in a way. What it can be. Uh, it's just a new Android version to a Fairphone 2, but uh, I don't know. Oh, a different device. Could be a tablet. Could be. But also now we're just speculating be. on rumors. Yeah. Yes. We're just, we're just proving how little we actually know. Yes, yeah. we know nothing. Yes. So, but yep. thanks for pointing it out. We will try to get in touch wh whoever is our contact now or can be our contact there um, to see if we can do something about it. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Maybe we know more in two weeks. Yeah. And and of course, let's let's say this. Of course, we would love to have Ubuntu touch on there. Um, yeah. We like the Fairphone, and the things we don't like about it could be solved with a newer device. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, when it comes to this question, it would be also a porting target. It probably doesn't have HDMI out, uh, so convergence maybe not. But we don't have any specs. Yeah. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, well, we will try to track it, but not today. Okay. <laughs> Alan, yes, that Mir guy asked a question or a few questions. Mir is not dead, by the way. Okay, we got that. Is that his question? No. <laughs> <laughs> Having seen the post about the Ophono hackathon, I was reminded of the Hallium project. For a long time now, Hallium has been the suggested route for new ports, and architecturally, it seems like an excellent initiative. In spite of this, the supported devices have continued with the legacy stack. Three questions, six questions, five questions. What is the state of Hallium based Ubuntu Touch? Is question one. So, so the, the like, what did he say? State or stage? What is the state? So state. what we have with um, uh, Ubuntu Touch mm -hmm. running on Hallium seven point one, so that's Android seven, um, is we have graphics, sound mostly, not in calls, um, and most hardware is there at the moment coming off memory again um what we're still missing of course as we've been talking about our calls um and other uh more paper cutty kind of things um there are fixes coming in especially with rachanan working for us a lot more now this is going really fast so audio yeah. has been being has been getting brought up a lot faster lately. Uh, there are a lot of ports in progress. Uh, even people who are starting to ask me about how do we get into the community channel of ports. So we're getting there with um, Hallium 7.1 based ports. Also, Rachanan has proposed an official scope document for the Hallium project which includes what Hallium does and what Hallium does not does. does not uh, do. That's a very interesting pull request over on github.com slash Hallium slash docs if you want to check that out. But there is a lot of movement inside of the Hallium project now. And I guess that answers your second question, whether or not there are working phones. They're coming. Uh, people are asking us about getting those into the community channel. So we're going to have to start looking into... Um, getting those into the community channel. Yep. And um, are we ever going to see a move to Hallium for future over-the-air updates? I don't believe so, not for all devices. So um, Rachanan, I'm going to spill the beans on his project, has been working on porting 
Helium 7.1 to the Fairphone. Um, two. And the reason that works really well, we started that in our porting video, which happened oh, months ago now. And he's been continuing that project to kind of, because everything works in the 5.1 port, we know that everything can work in the 7.1 port is the logic behind that. So that one at some point may be moving to Holium 7.1. For our other devices, though, including the OnePlus One and Nexus 5 are the devices that we ported. I don't believe that move will be happening. And for any of the devices that were created, supported by Canonical, we don't have all of the source that we need to bring those forward either. And then the final question... Um, uh, well, first, is the project moving forward? Yes, we talked about that with the scope document as well as a lot of work that people are putting in to, with the Afono Hackathon especially, kind of bring all these projects together, unify our efforts in some of the parts that aren't exactly related to Holium, but are important to all projects which are trying to run GNU Linux on an Android device. Uh, using the Android drivers, specifically. I hope that answers all of your questions, Alan. Steven tossed in a question that uh, basically boiled down to, can we get a video chat app for Ubuntu Touch, please? Sure. The thing, the thing is here is it comes down to the community also uh to to make applications um because there's already in works uh like U Matrix has an experimental branch which adds voice call and and that video chat to it so so this is definitely something that can can be added to the community but i'm not sure if the question is more natively uh, so the question as written was more about things like whereby, which is the rename of a peer in, um, and other oh web-based technologies. The reason that those are having trouble right now, you can get audio working in all of those, but not video, is because of that switch to Qt Web Engine we did a while back. The way that Qt Web Engine works is a patched version of Chromium from Google, but Qt also has their cute multimedia system, which is what we use in Ubuntu Touch to encode and decode video from uh, and audio from cameras and microphones and everything. In Qt Web Engine, uh, there isn't support for Qt multimedia yet. So instead of using those that camera support that we've already built and already exists. Cute Multimedia just uses video for Linux directly, which we don't currently have support for in Ubuntu Touch because we use the Android drivers to push that all through Cute Multimedia. So that's what's going on there, is that support isn't there. There are several projects happening uh, in the community to try to patch Cute Web Engine to use either Cute Multimedia or just directly use the Ubuntu Touch drivers. However, I can't really comment on the state of those right now because they're always a little bit in flux. And for um, Qt Web Engine in general, there are actually a lot of things coming down the pipe that are super awesome in Qt Web Engine. In 5.13, they added support for those um, drag handles on when you select text. So the reason why selecting text is a little wonky right now is because that support isn't there yet. In 5.13, that was added. Currently, we're on Qt Web Engine 5.11. And um, there are a couple of people working on upgrading us to 5.13, um, which reminds me there's a bug that I need to try and get someone at Canonical to look at. So thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> okay. So I hope that's a good comment on 
what needs to be done to enable these video chat web apps in Ubuntu Touch. Ballo HD colon capital D in YouTube live chat asks, what do you guys think about PostMarket OS? So PostMarket is a project to build a 10 year lifespan for smartphones, to say it simply. And in depth, what they do is they're um, building a complete distribution build system uh, based on Alpine uh, so that you can build mobile Linux distributions for devices. And in parallel, they work on mains, mainlining all the drivers for these older platforms, like older Qualcomm platforms or new ones. Um, things like the Fredrino driver in the Linux kernel to allow for mainline Linux kernels to use Android graphics uh, or Qualcomm graphics. And similar projects for MediaTek, um, Allwinner, and all the others out there. I think PostMarket is pretty cool, <laughs> to say it simply. They do a lot of work um, specifically to port things to Alpine, which is interesting and tends to show a bunch of bugs at different points. So I think they're doing good work. Has anyone else tried out PostMarket? Yeah. Any of you? Yeah. I tried what do it. you think? I, it, it's really, really interesting. I love the project. Um, and I also love the, the, the kind of things that they're trying to solve. Um, and also, I, I love their their goal is not initially as, hey, let's make daily drivers. The goal is more, hey, let's make this mainline and let's hack on this. Um, and that's something that's really, really cool and really beneficial for, for the community as a whole. To, to actually use mainline, mainline kernels on these instead of using the libhybris shenanigans. Although there is limited support for the libhybris shenanigans too. Right. <laughs> but but uh, what I'm coming at, that, that's not what they initially started with. Uh, the, the initial goal was to even, I think it even says on the, the, the website that uh, it's not daily driver mean, ready yet. Yeah. But. So so that's what I like about it is that they don't try to immediately achieve that because that's what what separates like Ubuntu Touch and Plasma Mobile to to PostMarket OS is that PostMarket OS do things a lot differently. Uh both Sailfish and and Ubuntu Touch and and Plasma Mobile is more we need to make this work for people. Um, like daily driving, while and now post market. Exactly. Yeah, I guess I guess that market. means that they have much more time to really rethink things and just actually make a better system rather yeah. than just do the same thing again. Yeah, Ex that's yeah. what. Yeah, that's what you're getting at. I just think it's a cool project, and there are. People working to port like Unity 8 and most, not all, of the Ubuntu Touch stack to Alpine. Some things like clicks are more less possible uh, for porting um, due to the way that they're built for these glibc systems and all that fun. But most of the stack is being built or ported to Alpine and PostMarket. Um, including running on the Pine phone at some junctures. We've seen it. Yeah. That's our thoughts on PostMarket. And, and, and also, one thing to, to add to that is um, it also, well, we're on the topic of, of including Unity 8. It also lets us see what can we do to make our, our stack not bound to Ubuntu slash Debian. Well, Ubuntu really. Ubuntu um, really, yeah. So, so that was something Canonical really did. Is like we make this only here, 
and it works here. Uh, and 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 we're trying to break this cycle. Um, and we start to see that with moving to to post market OS is one of the major ones is is we use something called nested mirror, uh, which we then have patches to Mesa, uh, and this Mesa. makes Mesa Mesa. It's it's a mess. Um, so yeah, they they patch that with the mirror support to be able to have mirror on the top of mirror using mirror client. Yo dog. And uses it. Yeah, it's complicated. Um, but what we would like this in the future to be is mirror on Wayland. <laughs> on, on yeah, mirror on Wayland or mirror. Something yeah, yeah. I, mm. Fuller. Marius knows what he's talking about, so obviously we don't need to. <laughs> well, okay, let me explain this a little bit better. Instead of go, instead of having mirror on top of mirror, but using mirror between, we have mirror on top of mirror, but using rail in between. Okay, there you go. Yeah. And it is helping us package for other distributions um, and do <laughs> all that work. One thing, um, Fuse Team asks, how different would Unity 8 on post-market be from Unity 8 on Ubuntu Touch? So on Ubuntu Touch, we're kind of building that whole system. Um, that's our purview of the world, is we have the entire system that we're shipping to you for these devices, right? Whereas post-market is more of the traditional Linux distribution, where you put the pieces together, if you break it, they're your pieces, uh, kind of thing. Um, so it's more like it's more like desktop Linux in that way, but not exactly. Um, and the PMOS Bootstrap, all of PM Bootstrap, and all of their tooling is kind of designed much differently than what we use for Ubuntu Touch. From a user perspective, ideally, you wouldn't notice that much between Ubuntu Touch and Unity 8 if you had everything installed correctly, um, except things like the open store and most click packages in it might not work correctly because they're built for different platforms. Right. I, I think uh, one of the main main things to take out of that is, is there the, the app dependency system app yeah, uh, the app packaging system would be a bit different because it's a different platform. Uh, um, not saying that you can't have a click on that, but click is more Debian. It is based on Debian, and click is technically a Debian package. Uh, really so, <laughs> so the integration with with other system that doesn't use Debian, I don't think would work that well. Uh, um, and I think that's the, the main thing to take out of it. Um, but other than that, the stack itself should work more or less the same if it's set up as it should be set up. Um, yeah. Okay. So what do y'all think? Yeah. Call it? Call it. Call uh, you, you... Okay. Call the guys that are doing a hackathon. Oh yeah, we should lose a few words about Pinefoam maybe also. Um, even if you don't yeah. know my pretty much news, but they made a case now. I saw the case and I saw something that could fit into the case. So it had the Pine a lot of hardware. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. specifically Pinephone hardware. They're working on actually making it look like a phone and putting it in a phone case and testing all of that out by itself. We're talking more our stuff. <laughs> so, so what have I, I have been hacking a little bit on, and also Notkit and Nikita has been hacking on, um, is to try to get Lima, uh, which is the open source implementation of Mali, which is the driver <laughs> that Pinephone I, uses. I love the open source community naming things. Well, Mali is still not open source. Oh. I know, but Lima is. Lima, Lima, Mali, Palm Frost. <laughs> yeah, uh, never mind. Uh, never mind the naming. So, so what we are trying to do is um, actually what 
Notkit has been trying to do, I'll just piggyback out of his work, um, is to to get the whole stack working on top of, of the latest and greatest in Lima development. Um, and what we're seeing is it, there are still some problems with transparency and some of the calls, uh, EGL calls are not getting there correctly. Um, so it basically is, um, there is something on the screen, but it's far from usable. Right. Uh, I saw you had pictures of the wizard working. The wizard doesn't use yeah. very many graphical effects to do what it does. So you can get the first run wizard and then it goes to a blank screen, I believe. Yes. Yeah. That's uh that's an, that's a QML issue though. So that's our fault, but, uh, it can't find some Android stuff, but yeah, um, that makes sense. Um, but something we also have been trying to do in parallel is um, to, to try to have one version with, with Mali blobs and see how that goes. And, and that one works fairly well. Um, it's pretty Mine much is the actually same. loading the firmware automatically, if I remember right. Yes. Yeah. It is... Um, the stack is a little bit different because we can't use mirror on mirror or what comes right. back again and again. So we have to use Wayland and when you start that, it doesn't start the correct, the cycle is a bit uh, screwed. Um, so I just need to, either we need to make mirror on Wayland faster or we need to make for Lima and have the Mesa patches for mirror. So we, there's kind of a dilemma here. Should we just go for our goal or take the shortcut and do the patching? And um, is the shortcut even shorter? Yeah. These are the kind of yes, things that we have to shorter. worry about. Much shorter. Much shorter. Probably. Um, yeah. Um, but also, while we're on the topic of, of development boards, I've also been trying to get... Uh, yeah, that one. The Librem, the Librem board. Um, because both and, of these happen at the same time, basically. Yeah, but what I'm doing the currently, what I'm doing now is pretty similar on both devices. So I pretty much yeah. copy paste between them. Um, I, I still have some problems. Uh, this one boots, uh, boots now and, and has some stuff going on on the screen. Um, but I'm not sure that there is some, some weird issues going on there too. Um, so. So, but I come to a point now where I have the image building and all that working, um, and and we are to a point now where we can more rapidly start development on these devices. Now, the so. Pinefork, yeah. for example, yeah, the Pinefork, for example, now has a daily build, um, and soon the the Librem will have to. Yeah. So once that starts getting done, then people can start contributing packages patches so that that can continue to happen however as yeah. we've said before the current devices are our our the most important <laughs> and getting yes. mirror and unity 8 is still the most important thing that we're doing new unity 8 specifically so everything in the edge channel yeah. merge to devil is still our highest priority also i i've been doing this on my uh my free time so uh free time ha ha yeah ha ha i don't have free time but <laughs> outside of the uv port work hours i actually well i work a lot more to work hours. as but you yeah. wish okay <laughs> um anything else here anyone else see anything else no mm -hmm. okay oops what did you drop? My favorite too. Nearly. Oh. Just got it. It's and okay because you can also replace all the parts in that if you break yes. anything. Yes. Very easily. You don't have to buy a new phone. And maybe also some quick fix for some people that complained about uh, the camera not available on Fairphone 2. Try to clean the context and reseat it because one of the little disadvantages of replaceable hardware is that it's not as tightly screwed and connected with the main PCB as on other phones, so things can get loose. Yeah? And it seemed to have worked for a few people. So, yeah. 
to open it up and reset the camera, it might come to life again. It's not the OTA 10 that broke your camera. We pretty much know that uh, both the old and the new camera are working on the Fairphone 2. Yep. And so we didn't break your camera. Maybe it's just dust. Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is impossible. This is software. <laughs> If it is something wrong with your phone, it's always expect hardware because we at Europos HQ never does wrong. <laughs> okay. On that, that happy way. note, <laughs> we don't really think that disclaimer. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching the Ubuntu Touch Q and A. This was episode fifty-seven. If you want to find us throughout the week, you can find us in all kinds of places, including Facebook, Twitter, PixelFed, Mastodon, LinkedIn, Instagram, and news channels on both Telegram and Matrix. If you just want to get the flow of new stuff that's happening, as well as events. If you want to actually chat with us, get involved a little bit more, maybe, you can find us on Matrix. We are hash ubports colon matrix.org or Telegram at UbiPorts. For longer form content, you can find us at forums.ubiports.com. And if you want to learn just about anything about Ubuntu Touch, you can go to ubuntu-touch.io. A huge thank you again to everyone for watching. Let us know what you think about this new format. We've got all of the people around here. Because Google shut down Hangouts on Air for us. So I'd like to know what you think of this. We're still kind of working out the bugs of what we're doing for streaming here. So, um, And if you want to see people upside down, you can vote for it. No, just kidding. But. <laughs> yep, that can do that. It can do a lot of weird stuff. So thank you again it, for it watching. can do that we indeed. Oh, no. And we will see you <laughs> next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Contribute your packages. <laughs>